Dave Kilroy is the chap that Peter Coates mentioned earlier. Um, he's an innovation associate from NHS Digital. Dave's also spent a lot of time working with Paul and the team to actually arrange today. So he's very multifaceted and talented, and he's also developed an application, and he's going to show it you now. Dave Kilroy. Hi. Um, okay, so um, I got to talk a bit about uh, this uh, dementia app that I've been involved in, in developing, but only in a very surface level thing, as an example of other apps that you guys hopefully will be making as time goes by. Let's see if I can make this technology work. Right, okay. So the thing that we made is um, Diadem, which is a, a, it's, um, it's a, it's a diagnosis of advanced dementia in a care home setting. It came from, um, uh, it came from a, a use case in Bradford, uh, Yorkshire and the Humber, uh, trying to get uh, uh, numbers of the diagnosis of dementia up. Uh, and in a case where, say, in a care home, Mrs. Smith has been in there maybe quite a long time, she's not the same as she was, to get a diagnosis might involve taking it to a memory clinic and might be upsetting, and for all sorts of reasons, um, uh, it, it, was, it, it was awkward. And so the uh, clinicians there came up with, just bring you back to this thing, which is a paper version, a paper tool, which has been in use for over two years, and has been done sterling work. And so they heard about... Uh, Code for Health, and a particular technology that I happen to use as well called Live Code, and uh, from uh, uh, Code for Health, and they had an opportunity to see if we could appify this app, and so they thought it might might, might be worthwhile. Uh, they came along to a uh, app in a day course, which is a complete lie because you don't make an app in a day, but you make a kind of an idea of an app. It gets you going. They got infected enough that. Um, the guy that I'm going to call later, because the father of Diadem, a guy called Colin Sloan, quality improvement manager, he went off and he did, he did a prototype. They got me then along to do a follow-up. I had a, I was in a room with seven quality improvement managers. It was a hell of a workshop, but it actually was really good. So they decided then to take take it forward again with more help from from Code for Health, and I think a Perth Foundation was existing at this stage. This is about a year and a half ago, um, and they went for the challenge and they got the money. And they got a developer, me. Um, uh, a lot of the clinical governance had been done by the time I, I was I was involved. Um, what we started to do was when I came across this first, I thought, oh, this isn't that bad. The stuff I've got to do by connecting to um, this funny stuff in the cloud because I hadn't come across. I've done a tiny bit with OpenEHR, not much. Maybe take me about two weeks or so. Um, what's that? A year and a half or so later. Um, just things grow, don't they, in the medical world. So we worked with Ian and Hildy. They initially, this uh, tool, shall I say, it works using two COG tools, clinical, uh, sorry, cognitive test tools, 6CIT and GP COG. So they created archetypes for those. They also created an archetype for a diadem, because I don't know if you saw from looking at the paper uh, system there, it basically works on five main tests. If you can go for uh, positive or a true answer to these five main tests, like corroborating history as well as you know, uh, functional impairment, shall we say, you've got a functional uh, 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 diagnosis. From that, they created the template. So it's kind of like the ingredients, you know, your, your pasta and your bacon and your mushrooms or whatever, creates the meal, which is the template. That's how I think of it in, in cooking terms, actually. <coughs> and that's what, I, that's what I worked with, after a lot, lot of pain. Um, some of the, we decided because of, this is where we needed Ewan Davis's help here, we decided how do you connect somebody in an insecure connection to what would be kind of like highly sensitive data. And so we decided to go for kind of a halfway extra server involved, kind of messenger boy kind of server. So we've got one server that uh, manages a lot of the member management stuff. And we've got another server, which is now in UK Cloud, um, which handles the actual data. So this seems to have worked well, although we've gone through so many iterations. Uh, when you develop your own apps and come to do your own stuff, you will bang your shins, I'm sure, an awful lot away. Hopefully not as many times as we did. You'd be able to use some of our experience, but no, no doubt you will. Um, so that's what this thing on the left is for, is showing the login process. There's an awful lot involved in that, including registration. Hopefully that will get easier as time goes by, because we won't have to have um, 
people actually registering <laughs> with their passwords and emails and things like that would be able to get on onto an identity service and be able to connect into that as an API. Um, uh, we've got to allow for different things to what uh, Gareth and um, uh, Scott, uh, Jason were doing, which is we're working with a device which is possibly unconnected to anything. So we've got to allow people to work offline. We've got to get into uh, encryption, security of data, how long can they keep the data for, an awful lot of policy development stuff as well there. Um, we've got offline modes, online modes, how many times they, are they allowed to connect, to connect offline? Um, so many different things to sort out. So we have worked our way through. Um, we got onto the IG side of the information governance stuff, I think it's slightly late. If I could go back in time, I think <coughs> I probably would bring that on earlier rather than going through some of that pain in a, con in a concentrated form right at the end. Um, the actual app itself is very, very simple. It's uh, basically it's a wizard going through a series of steps. And in many ways, for the people here, it doesn't really matter what we're talking about. The idea is you've got to do with, I don't know, diabetes or physiotherapy or um, whatever with screening, whatever it is, will be presumably not that, that diff diff different. We go together, uh, we go along the wizard, we ask, we ask stuff, we get um, uh, data, we save it somewhere, and then what I do with the OpenEHR then is I post it to uh, UK Cloud as an, as an OpenEHR composition. Um, before I do that though, um, Ian showed this very quickly, I have to connect to the demographic server on the, on the, on, on the repository because to have an OpenEHR record we need to have a person to attach to that record. So here we are here, we're creating, well, we're checking, does Arthur Strong, um, and you'd, we'd be choosing the, the date of birth, do they have a record in the, on this repository? If they do, great, let's use that and we'll get their open EHR ID and we'll be able to add to their collection of, of records. If not, then we'll create it on, on this repository. Um, these are some of the, the other steps to do with Diadem in your physiotherapy or whatever app. You'll have your own different things that you're, you're going through. As I go through all this stuff, I'm adding to uh, my own data model or the app's own data model. It's an array, basically. Um, Oh, sorry, these are the other tests I should have said. This would here is, oh, this is stuff to do with the cognitive impairment. At the moment, we've got two different uh, archetypes. We've got the 6CIT and the GP COG. The way it's done and the way OpenEHR is, is great. If there's another cognition, to, to, uh, cognition testing tool that's around, and if Ian and Hildy make an archetype for it, we can add that to the, to the app as well, that's easy. Or else somebody else can make their own tool and they'll use different ones, or they'll just use 6CIT and they, they won't use a different one. The data underneath is the same. Um, when we're sending off the data, there is some stuff we have to uh, sort out as regards. When we're sending the data, uh, we have to send some metadata to my, our messaging service, and we have to send the data currently in a kind of half-hearted way uh, using email, secure email, uh, to the GP. So the GP gets notification of what's happening, but the data is also being saved on the, on, the, on the server. As time goes by, hopefully we'll get better with managing all this, including the audit and the back trail. This is where we got to so far. Uh, this is the emails uh, the GP would get. Uh, currently they're getting, we're working with Docman, so they just, uh, because of that, we're having to send an actual attachment, we're sending a, a PDF. Um, there's issues to do with information governance or uh, we have to tighten that up, but we got to, apparently to an acceptable uh, level for now. And there's a no notification for the, uh, for the assessor as well. There's lots of different, because it's medical data, there's lots of stuff involved, again, separate to um, Gareth and Jason, because they're working at a disconnected place. How do we make sure data is up to date? And you know, the people, right people have got access to the data. Uh, there's some other issues we have to kind of work out during tutorial sessions, how do we make sure the data isn't sent to the, 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 uh, the place where all the, all the rest of the data, data is saved? Uh, how, do we de how do we handle failure? Because people are going to press the wrong button, they're going to be in an area where there's intermittent connection, all that kind of stuff, but we have seemed to have found a way around it. So from the app, the way the app deals with data is JSON, so basically text. And from that, the, what, what the app does is it makes an array, and then it, I, in the array, I connect it to basically the GUI bits in there. So when they answer yes or no, or whatever it is, I attach all that. 
when I send off data, when the app sends off data, it turns that array back into JSON and posts that up again. So effectively the app, I'm all the time, except for the very beginning and the very end, I'm just dealing with an array all the time. So it's actually super easy. Got to the stage now, it is more complicated than using something like Google Maps, but it's not <coughs> that much more complicated than using Google Maps. What is complicated is all the ins and outs and information governance to the medical stuff, but that would happen anyway. Um, I have made some, as I've gone along, I've made some stuff to make my life easier, and I hope uh, my special, my speciality language that I use is this thing called live code. So I'm hoping to be able to help other people using live code uh, to make it easier for them to make apps uh, for OpenEHR. Um, Peter and NHS Digital, they all have other people who are experts at Python and Perl and whatever languages, and hopefully the same thing again as well, so that we can encourage more people to use the platform. So I've got a code library, which again, you can attach to different um, apps and people can just use the same functionality, API calls, you know, JSON web tokens, all that kind of stuff like that. I've made a, a little kind of test harnessing to be able to go to a, a CDR and query what templates are in there, pull down from there things like template data, uh, 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 example data and some metadata, which I can then use. Um, this used to work about a year and a half ago, but it's now broken, but I'll have to make a new version of this. Something which will do the equivalent of making a Hello World Open EHR app. So it might be, shall we say, you've got an idea, you're going to, I don't know, your allergies app, shall we say you wanted to have your allergies app, Jason. Where's Jason? There you are. Um, you want to have a, 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 an app based uh, to use outside the thing. You would be able to, of course, use the same open EHR templates and things like that. So you might get somebody say, look on our CDR, they could pull down, they could pull down the relevant bits of data they needed. From that, they would be able to make the, the correct bits of JSON that it needs to be able to, with this, make a hello world app. It would do nothing but just say, possibly, hello, or post some data up and pull it back down again. But then they would be off and going. And then it's a matter of making a nice GUI, uh, sorting out the special things because they're not always connected to your system or whatever it would be. Hopefully we'll be able to use things like this to be able to pick up the speed a bit so that some of you are thinking about open HR is good but I can't use it for three years, four years. Hopefully we can get you prototyping before that. Uh, on GitHub, uh, I have to make an apology here, uh, live code is a binary thing so it's uh, code together with the GUI. There is a way in which you can split it. I have been too busy, uh, but I am going to uh, make that change so that you will be able to use VCS and Git. You'll be able to see it nicely on GitHub. Um, uh, at the moment, if you want to look up what's there, you have to download the live code. It's a free uh, uh, framework. You have to download it, and then you can have a play. But as time goes by, uh, you will be able to see it up, up there and download it yourself, make comments, uh, add, add to it, uh, and that kind of thing. Uh, it's the Diadem website, which is fantastic, and how I got. Uh, there's, it, I've already talked about the registering and lo logging on stuff. It's on up the App Store, it's on Google Play, but it is effectively in beta. Um, the father of Diadem, Colin Sloan, uh, this is how to get him. If you want to talk to somebody who isn't a clinician involved in how painful was it really, um, have to talk to him. Um, challenges and lessons learned. Um, what he said, he told me to tell you, was keep an open mind. Coders don't know what clinicians do, and vice versa. And uh, I think be, be patient is what he said, really. He's a great guy. So the last thing now is, Peter said there was clinical modeling uh, workshop. So we have been lucky enough to be able to get Ian and Hildy to come down, probably to Plymouth, but it might be Truer, it might be Exeter, we have to talk about it. Um, to do clinical modelling, which would be a good place to start, even if you weren't clinicians, because you will pick up so much. It's a two-day course, it's very intense, but it's very worthwhile. Currently, we're looking at the 6th and 7th of June, um, but it's, we have to say it's provisional at this stage. If you're interested in doing it, talk to me, talk to Ian and Hildy, talk to Peter, and we can hopefully get some apps being developed in this part of the world. That's it. Uh, hopefully, what, what we've demonstrated with, with th these two quite different um, things is that the approach that open air and this open standards supports is completely multifaceted. And the ecosystem we're trying to develop 
is to allow electronic med medical records to be built both from big applications that need big development teams and take two or three years of R&D and lots and lots of focused, streamlined applications that very keen individuals, be they clinicians or techies or whatever, can equally develop. And these two, I think, hopefully show that the, the two approaches are completely complementary. And certainly for us, we, we see them as a, a big part of our journey together. And hopefully we'll continue this in one of the workshops to come.